health junkies. It's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. Today, I have Dr. Greg Echo on the line. He's a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist just like me, who happens to practice in Portland, very close to me, and specializes in brain regeneration and restoration for those with chronic neurological conditions. Dr. Greg is going to be releasing a book soon, and we are going to talk about that book, Shake It Off, An Integrative Approach to Parkinson's Solutions. We're also going to talk about the brain, the nervous system, and anything else we can come up with that'll be useful to you today. So welcome to the Health Fix, Dr. Eckel. Oh, thanks for having me on. Well, you know, you've got quite a great story. So I want to jump right into that. But let's first go to how how did you get into naturopathic medicine? What what drew you to our side of the world? Sure. You know, I had never heard of naturopathic medicine. I grew up in western Pennsylvania and went to school in central Pennsylvania and naturopathic. Now we're licensed back there, but at that point in the uh, in the early 90s, um, never heard of it and moved out here to Portland, Oregon in 1992. And I was um, an eclectic Portland dude. I had a booth at Saturday Market selling kaleidoscopes and marbles that I handmade. I wrote timber appeals for big forest, uh, you know, to stop old growth logging. And I was a preschool teacher in the Montessori school district. And, um, you know, kind of an eclectic early 90s Portland guy. And um, I was watching all of these kids, these three to six year olds being put on Ritalin. And in particular, Michael, he was my poster child. Now, I like to say Michael included others in his learning. And he was, yes, definitely a rambunctious dude, like out on the playground all over the place. And in a Montessori classroom, it's where kids can choose their own work and and work collaboratively or solo at their desk or at different stations. And, and Michael was always just flitting about, kind of involved in others' work. Uh, and definitely, you know, had some had some issues with that. But um, the main teacher advocated for the parents, said, hey, I think Michael has attentional issues. Um, I think you should take him into your pediatrician. And lo and behold, Michael got diagnosed with attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder and was put on Ritalin. And I can remember really clearly the first day he came back um, into the room on medication. And so, you know, that little glimmer that kids have in their eye, that was gone. He was slumped over in his chair and his desk. And while he, you know, didn't get up the rest of the day, he just, his life and energy was gone. And, you know, I just carried that picture of like, okay, we got to help the Michaels of the world. Like this is, we're drugging small children at this point. And, uh, you know, so that's really that. And I was also a junk food vegetarian at the time. Um, I was, I thought I was eating healthy, healthy, uh, but it was all packaged, you know, food. And I went in and a you know, bunch of different circles in Portland said, you got to go to this clinic. They'll, you know, there it's a natural, it's a natural clinic. I thought, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and I went in and they addressed my diet and they called me a junk food vegetarian and they didn't give me anything else other than just changing my diet, really educating me about what I was eating. And I made those changes and I felt awesome. <laughs> and I just thought if I was going to go back to school, you know, I wanted to be in service to people and this was, this was it, like it, about the energetics of botanicals and, you know, being in service to people, helping them with their life, um, their goals and just getting their health back. Uh, and I have not regretted it one day. It's been so, such a great undertaking. And I graduated in 2001. 
I see. From, Nat- from National College okay. down here in Portland. Okay. So you, you graduated right when I was getting started. I, I started best year in 2001. So uh-huh. we were kind of entering and you were exiting, I'm entering. And I also was a, I was a cheese and breaditarian. And so if, uh-huh. if, if nothing else, I think the natural medicine schools, you know, if I was like, oh, this degree did nothing for me, at least it did amazing things for me changing how I was eating, like hands down <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, as far as degrees go, I mean, we have a pretty awesome scope of practice here in Oregon and you know, it is kind of the sky's the limit of who we can help and what we can do. So that's, um, you know, I haven't regretted it one day. I'm glad you didn't because it sounds like you've got quite a big scope and you're helping folks in the restorative nervous system department, which, you know, a lot of people shy away from because things like Parkinson's, which your book's all about, and, and some of the other degenerative neurological conditions, a lot of people throw their hands up and go, I don't know what to do. And so it's great you're in that universe. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. And the more docs that I talk to about it, um, you know, it is a very underserved population because there's been there's been no breakthroughs in neurologic, chronic neurodegeneration. And the rates of people, uh, you know, getting this diagnosis of Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, they're just going up. Um, you know, every year there's more and more diagnosis being made and, you know, a a component we can talk about why I think that is. Um, but it is, um, it's a totally underserved and, you know, I like to say we treat people, not conditions, not disease patterns, not pieces and parts. And by, you know, our, our general think, thinking process of being naturopathic docs, is so different than even functional or integrative medical practitioners. You know, I, I'm out lecturing at a at a lot of a um, uh, lot of conferences, and you know, docs will come up and say, "Oh, I really wish I went to naturopathic school." And you know, and these are functional medicine um, conferences, and so mm-hmm. you know what what they don't realize, and what the general public doesn't realize is that there's a there's an inherent thinking difference. And it's a big deal. Um, because once you put on that Western thinking cap in through osteopathic or uh, medical doctor training, or even advanced practice nurses, so nurse practitioners are also getting into integrative and functional medicine. It's a different way of thinking than naturopathically where we actually treat people, not diseases. And uh, you know, while it sounds just simple to say it that way, it's a profound difference of how we approach care with people. And there is such a need for this naturopathic approach in the neurologic conditions. Um, you know, these folks are, they're just, they're, they're sick. They're, you know, they go in, they get serially monitored. Let's say for Parkinson's, <laughs> because that's what I first kind of topic that I, yeah. that I chose to, to write about. And it, they just go in, they get serially monitored. And, um, you know, I asked them, okay, well, what did your neurologist say? And they say, well, they, they didn't say anything until I asked them. They basically said, just see you next year. And then I asked them, okay, well, what, do you, what did you find, doc? Um, and they said, well, you're getting worse. And, you know, the patient is so frustrated. It's like, you know, I didn't need to come up here or in here for you to tell me I was getting worse. I already knew that. Like, what's new? Like, what can you do for me? And, you know, unfortunately, there's been no breakthroughs, right? There's no magic purple pill for folks with Parkinson's um, or dementia or Alzheimer's, right? You know, for any of these um, conditions. And what you find, what I found is, well, actually taking a holistic whole person approach, you know, one, we're getting to know our patients. Not everybody has arrived at that diagnosis the same way. Right. And two, to really just be with them as a human being and, and listening to what, you know, what their concerns are, their worries, their fears, you know, what is going on with their body and how, you know, maybe they feel a little bit betrayed by it. And, you know, their walking is shutting down and they've got this internal tremor or their speech is slurred. Um, there's a lot that we can do naturopathically or in the natural medicine world. Um, and that's what I wrote about in my book. Mm, I can't wait till that comes out. 
So can you give us a little bit of a highlight in terms of, of let's go into, let's go into, you know, a patient gets, say the, you know, like you just said, they go in, they keep having symptoms getting worse. Their doc's like, yep, you're just getting worse. What can you do to keep the nerves healthy, you know, diet wise, maybe herb wise? What, what have you found to be the most useful for patients? Well, sure. And, you know, and this really is um, what I've put together is what I call my fancy approach. So it's capital F, capital A, capital N, dash, capital C, the fancy approach. So it the F stands for the functional. So a functional uh, whole person naturopathic approach. So we kind of just kind of talked about that. The A is assessment. And I find a lot of folks are not getting properly assessed. So this, I'm kind of dodging your question, but I'm going to get back to it because the assessment really, the assessment really does um, dictate what paths we go forward. So it's not always, it's not just like, oh, here's these herbs for nerve health or, you know, here's this different therapy, you know, Qigong for movement and, and balancing nervous system. Although those are, those are some things and we will get there, but the assessment is really crucial. And there's three or four areas that I find with chronic neurodegeneration, people are just not getting worked up properly. In fact, not at all, right? You get kind of pigeonholed into this movement disorder, which is called Parkinson's. And, you know, you're basically in that silo and you're taking uh, cinemat like levodopa, carbidopa the rest of your life. And, and that doesn't even work well and it wears off. So assessment wise, you know, when you look at nervous system and the nerves, you know, we know heavy metals are an issue for everyone in North America, right? There's the NHANES data, which is uh, every five to 10 years, they do an assay of a, a big portion of the population and they're checking for levels of toxicity and heavy metals are in North America are, are big. Um, you know, when I learned about an environmental medicine class, um, I started testing everybody for heavy metals, and then I realized, oh, I can't do that because everybody came back with heavy metals. So Great. it becomes, you know, a little bit like, okay, now well, what do we do with that? But for neurologic conditions, we store toxins in our fat. Where's a bunch of fat? Our brain is a bunch of fat. So there is a component of the heavy metals. You got to do heavy metal testing, and I don't like hair analysis. Um, I've compared hair analysis to uh, challenged urine collection. And, you know, there are some people that just cannot excrete certain toxins out through the hair follicle, um, which also gives them issues with heavy metals. So I do a, an IV chelation or an oral DMSA challenge. And I'm looking, what I find is mainly uh, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and lead are the top four. Now, it doesn't mean that there aren't other uh, metals in toxic levels, but those are the top four that I found over the last two decades of practicing for folks with chronic neurodegeneration. So you got to rule that in and rule it out. How I got to that, David Perlmutter, maybe 15 years ago, posted a YouTube video of a gentleman with Parkinson's, a really, um, you know, kind of the stutter step gait and pill rolling effect really, um, really affected with Parkinson's and he did a glutathione push with this individual. And, um, the guy was like a miraculous cure. was able to walk strong strident steps down the hallway. And I thought, Oh, you know, I've been, I was doing IV therapy at that time. I was seeing patients with Parkinson's. So I started doing glutathione pushes predominantly with these folks. And first five patients I did it with, it was like crickets, like, this isn't working. I thought, did he hire like a model to do that on YouTube? (laughs) Um, I know he didn't, you know, now I've I've learned that no, it was, it was actually a real patient, but the, the population that I was seeing and still see are more of the difficult recalcitrant conditions. I like to say, you don't want to be the interesting patient at nature cures (laughs) clinic because, you know, we're seeing the folks that have been to Mayo and Cleveland and, you know, they're just really, p- people are at a loss, like, oh, we're not sure what to do with you. So th- yep. uh, doing the heavy metals, then you get those out, then actually the glutathione does work. So, you know, that is one component is you got to turn that stone over for metal testing. 
So can we stop there for a second? Just, sure. Just so folks can maybe understand, you know, with a DMSA, oral DMSA challenge, now you're talking capsules, correct? Of correct. DMSA? Okay. Just so folks kind of get that under their belt and knowing what, where you're going with that. And then in terms of testing, are you doing a full-on urine collection or are you doing strips, kind of like the ZRT Labs type of testing? Oh, yeah. No, no. Full-on urine collection. So you okay. do a pre-test okay. before you do any chel- – and a chelating agent is like a big magnet. So it comes into the body and it pulls metals. It also pulls vitamins and minerals out too. So it's it's got – it's kind of like a big magnet that pulls these things out. And then you collect your urine for six hours. So um, – you know, for EDTA, when people come into the clinic, we'll do an IV of EDTA, which is another chelating agent. Very, it's more, it's stronger than the oral variety of DMSA. But these are all, you know, kind of interchangeable chelators that pull these things out of the body. So I really like collecting a timed collection after taking a chelating agent because the half life of EDTA is is um, 12 hours. So getting a six hour collection is, is sufficient to get a a level there. Um, And then the same thing on the DMSA doing the urine collection is really important. Okay. So that makes sense. Now the same thing, now there's a lot of people out there that have seen the bulletproof liposomal glutathione and things of that nature, and maybe they tried it and you know, dealt with the flavor and (laughs) dealt with how much it costs. And then they're not seeing results. This would be why they're not seeing results that they possibly have heavy metals in their body. Possibly, possibly. Right. And you know, it's, it's interesting with glutathione. Haven't found folks to, um, really, you know, feel like wonder woman or wonder, you know, or (laughs) Superman after, after taking it, it's more of a cumulative effect of it, right. As an antioxidant. Um, I have found some uh, liposomal glutathione's to work, um, as well as uh, some IV pushes of the glutathione. Um, and I found this out from my Parkinson's p- patients with Parkinson's, and then also a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, where um, she's in her thirties, um, was having to come in. She got referred over for the IV glutathione. And uh, to decrease inflammation throughout her body because she had she still has uh, rheumatoid arthritis. She had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis as a kid, continued throughout her adulthood. Um, so she was having to come in every two weeks for a push. And uh, the the varietal of the liposomal glutathione, and they're not all created equal, um, she stopped coming in as frequently. And so, you know, I kind of called her up and said, Hey, how are you doing? She said, Oh, I'm doing great with that new oral, uh, liposomal glutathione. So, um, so that was and that I was using two or three other varietals before I arrived at the one that actually had the most, um, effect. And I have had other patients also notice that same effect with, with a good quality liposomal. Um, but first, you know, you have to front end load the system with the IV. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. So the you know goes down the line of okay. One thing we want to think about if someone has Parkinson's or you know getting, even suspects they have Parkinson's, definitely looking at the heavy metals. And speaking of suspecting, maybe we should jump back a little bit and talk about pre Parkinson's because I think a lot of people don't even realize the symptoms, you know, trying to catch things before it gets worse. I I guess looking at symptoms of of neurological autoimmunity or neurological, you know, things that are pre-Parkinson's, those are things we we probably should talk about too. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, one of the, one of the symptoms, and this is a pretty ubiquitous symptom out there, could happen one to two decades, so 10 to 20 years before actually developing, you know, major Parkinson's symptoms is constipation. Um, so slow bowel. So we, you know, there is some theories that, uh, Parkinson's begins in the gut and, um, oh, definitely, you know, it's not, I'm not saying everybody with constipation is going to develop Parkinson's, but it is something to know about. Uh, if your bowels are not regular, uh, in that you're going to the 
number two every day, uh, then you've got some type of constipation and you really want to understand why that's happening and get it corrected as quickly as possible. While, you know, and I'm sure you've seen folks like that. Like I haven't had a bowel movement all week. It's like, yeah, holy right. cow, <laughs> you know, like that's intense. And, you know, they quote unquote say it's totally normal for them. Um, and so I try to really get into a discussion around what's common versus normal. And that's not normal. That could be very common for them. Um, but you really should be having a bowel movement every day. So that's, that's one that is a telltale sign. The other one is uh, loss of sense of smell. So the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one, um, for smell. So loss of sense of smell is another one. Now that could be a simple zinc deficiency, uh, but it could be something more ominous in the neurologic realm because that cranial nerve goes directly right up into the brain, um, and so that that could be a sign of uh, some neurologic issues. So you definitely, you want to get it checked out by somebody who knows what they're looking for, right? Unfortunately, the system is set up to wait for you to get so pathological that it's completely obvious that you've got an issue. Um, So what you're talking about is like, well, is there anything that my listeners can do to make sure, you know, to kind of cut it off at the pass and or prevent stuff from progressing? And so, you know, it's really like listening to your body and in understanding why the symptom is occurring. And if you don't understand why, then going to practitioners that can help you figure out why. Um, so asking that question, why do I have that symptom and listening actually to the body. So those are two big ones. The other one that got Alan Alda in to get diagnosed, there was an article in the New York Times about um, uh, an early symptom are, are, is acting out your dream. So he woke up one morning, you know, hitting his wife with his pillow, um, thinking that it was a sack of potatoes and he was, you know, warding off some, um, some attack. And, um, you know, so acting out your dreams is another kind of an odd symptom, but it can be an early sign of Parkinson's. Wow. That one I, you know, had not heard of. So that's even good for me to hear. Okay. So thanks for sharing those. So I think one of the big things too that I definitely wanted to talk with you about is, is the naturopathic approach in terms of uniqueness and especially added on that you are a acupuncturist because now you also have the Chinese medicine thought process into the nervous system. So. Let's go back to that assessment department of your fancy approach to Parkinson's. Sure. Now, looking at every single individual uniquely and as an individual versus someone in the bucket of you have Parkinson's, what other things? We've talked about the gut. We've talked about heavy metals. What about viruses? What about some of those other things out there? Yeah, so there is a concept called molecular mimicry. And if you put that into PubMed with any kind of condition, you can come up with other things that mimic or could cause a condition. And so, you know, looking at viruses, uh, the three that I have found around uh chronic neurodegeneration is Epstein Barr, herpes simplex, and cytomegalovirus. And these three have to be ruled in or ruled out because if they come back with large titers, now this doesn't mean somebody is sick with a virus, but they've had either exposure to that virus or the virus is at higher levels in their blood. So it's causing a distraction to the vital force of their body's innate healing ability. Um, And so you have to then go on to some natural antiviral therapies uh, to help rid the body of those. So it's Epstein-Barr, Cytolomegalo, and Herpes Simplex are the three that I find in that department. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And so you're talking reactivated monos, just for folks to have clarification. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen a range of titers on reactivated monos. Some people are in the six hundred above the 600s if, if you're looking at um, lab core, they don't give you any specifics and other labs will give you more specifics. What do you take? Is it anything that's going to fit within the algorithm of, of reactivated mono, or are you looking at a certain amount of titers that you will actually go after and use a certain herbal therapy? Well, so one, I don't treat directly to labs, but I find, um, 
And also, I haven't found the titers to be, you know, totally correlated to illness or, mm-hmm. um, you know, too mate too viral load. So, um, so just a word of caution to folks out there. Um, but if it's there and and high enough levels, um, we'll do some generally some antiviral. So meaning um, I, I do a lot with Chinese herbal prescriptions. So I'll treat it herbally that way as far as a constitutional formula for the individual. I'll use um, Pecana uh, remedies. It's kind of out of Germany, oh. biotherapeutic drainage stuff. Um, Notatum and Quintans, we'll use those um, to help balance immune system function. Um you know, levels of vitamin D, checking what their level is in their blood. Um, also wanting to get them up into adequate levels, which I, I call between 50 and 80 uh, nanograms per deciliter for vitamin D. That also helps modulate immune system response. Um, and then occasionally doing, you know, vitamin A therapy as well. If the, you know, if I am suspecting that the viral um, aspect of their case is, is a uh, a bigger player. Okay. Okay. I love that you say you're not treating on labs. That's amen to that. Um, (laughs) Looking at lymph node swelling, things of that nature too, for folks out there. What about in terms, you know, you were saying with the Epstein-Barr labs, because I do have some people that are absolutely neurotic that their, their titers are not going down with EBV despite using multiple herbs like artemisinin and, you know, different, even acyclovir and different things that the other docs have given them. Um, what you're saying, just to clarify, is that it doesn't sometimes match. You might just see those titers elevated possibly permanently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, what happens, you know, I think a lot of times in um, functional integrative medicine land, people start treating labs yeah. and get focused on those titers and it's like, Oh, we got to get those numbers down. And I haven't seen a correlation between health and the numbers on the, on the titers for these viruses. So, um, meaning somebody could have a humongous high titer and feel perfectly fine. And somebody have a very low titer and just feel miserable. So yeah. 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 Okay. They go up and they go down. Yeah. Good to mention because, yeah, I have a couple of folks that I've heard from that they just can't get their titers down, but they feel okay. So they wonder if they still need to be treated. So good right. to hear that. Treat the person, not the labs. Yes, always. <laughs> what else yeah, about assessment did we not cover in terms of what you're well, looking at to assess people? Yeah, so there's two other components. So what we'll look at, so definitely hormone balance is a big player here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some have called Parkinson's um, hypothyroidism of the brain. <laughs> so we don't just look at thyroid, though. I'll run a Dutch analysis on folks, uh-huh. uh, which is a urine testing for uh, hormones as well as their metabolites. So you get to see the whole pathway of where they're going. Um, I really like that one. I've used basically all of them. I've correlated it to, to labs, uh, you know, all of the salivary testing, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, I, I do like the Dutch test. So that hormone balance is one big one. And then also looking at the gut. Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever your favorite gut lab is, I've been using GI maps, but yep. diagnostics, Genova, these are great labs that have some awesome, um, functional analysis, but also looking for any, uh, pathologic gut bugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so whatever comes up in those, you definitely have to, uh, put into the treatment plan as a, as a holistic approach. So that's why I was getting at like, well, what, what would be great for nerve health and or brain health, which we will get to next, <laughs> um, you, you know, the, doing this assessment, this is the biggest piece that I find um, that in the integrative naturopathic world, we can really do a big service to our patients in that doing a really thorough assessment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I tell patients, no stone left unturned with us yeah. naturopaths. We figure, you know, it's worth looking everywhere. All right. So tell us about that end part of the fan C. Yes, the (laughs) N is the nerve. So this is on nerve health, and this is really applicable to everybody, whether you have a chronic neurodegeneration or not. You know, just having a brain um, on the planet right now, we are exposed to 
uh, a lot of chemicals, you know, 80,000 chemicals a week in the United States. Ooh. We talked about the heavy metal burden as well. Uh, not to mention now there's all kinds of information coming around uh, glyphosate and these pesticides that are pretty ubiquitous. So, you know, doing some detox um, and cleansing is important. Um, I, I have most of my patients will do one to three different types of uh, detoxifications a year. I don't like people doing detox year round or all of the time. I don't want you walking around thinking you're toxic. Um, but I think just changing the filter every now and then, in particular around the liver, is very important. And so, you know, we mentioned the glutathione is a major um uh, nerve and brain health nutrient. Uh, I love alpha lipoic acid. Um, I'm a big fan. You know, when I went to med med school and I'm sure when you went, we didn't even know about the endocannabinoid system. So uh, using CBD, it seems to be in ubiquitous in all kinds of products in Washington and Oregon right now. And, you know, you travel around the country, see it everywhere. It's a little bit the flavor of the month, but it is really important to have some tone on that endocannabinoid system. Um, so d- CBD is something that I will recommend for folks. Um, there are some specific Chinese formulas that I, I really um, – will go to. It's basically based off of the pulses of the individual though, but the patterns that we see um, are phlegm misting the orifices. I know this is kind of a new language for, <laughs> for a lot of folks out there, but you know, I overlay that uh, the Chinese medicine system. Um, it's actually the, the backbone of how I assess folks and, um, and really look at cases um, and developing programs for folks, but uh, doing um some, you know, heat clearing, uh, damp clearing, uh, sometimes it's yang tonic. So depending on the constitution of the individual and what they've got, um, what they've got going on, um, that's, you know, we have to look at that. So, uh, those are some of my go-to, uh, nerve health, um, supplements. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. I love, I love the Chinese uh, aspect of things because it just seems to make sense. Yeah. It just does. So we've got the N part of things. What about the C part of things? So the C is in cellular regeneration. And this one, I, not in a million years would I have thought I'd be talking to you about regenerative stem cell therapies. Um, this one I came across uh, and how I really got into brain regeneration in general, was my uh, personal story. I lost my wife to an uncurable neurologic condition called Kurtzfeld Jacob disease, um, which is not Parkinson's, but um, CJD is kind of like mad cow syndrome in people. And she was 43 when she passed. And I, um, you know, there's no known cure for this condition. And so I went researching and came across uh, this mountain of evidence to support stem cell therapy in brain regeneration. And I thought, why are we not using that in the United States? And, you know, go digging on it and realize, oh, research in the United States was um, halted in 1991 for political and religious reasons. And what that in effect did was put us 30 years behind the curve of the rest of the world who continued to research uh, stem cell therapies. And, you know, there's a mountain of evidence to show it's safe and it's effective. And um, it's still not um, not FDA approved in this country. A lot of folks are using it now for orthopedic uh, procedures. Yep. But it is, you know, mesenchymal or mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs. Um, we get them from a, a cord bank. It's placenta and amniotic tissue fluid. So there's exosomes and um, anti-inflammatory cytokines and growth factors. And basically, I call it the, the conductor of our innate healing ability Come helps organize our the symphony of healing in our body. So it'll donate, these cells will donate pieces and parts for our body to heal itself. And so I went looking for a solution for Soraya was her name. Um, and so this is a piece of Soraya's gifts of what I call it. Um, 
you know, didn't help her, unfortunately, but it is really helping a lot of folks with these chronic neurodegenerative states. And the overlap um, between CJD and Parkinson's and dementia and Alzheimer's are uh, misfolded proteins, and in particular, this concept called prions, and the, which are just misfolded proteins. And um, and so I went really, you know, kind of looking at okay, how do we rehab the brain, um, and have developed this this fancy approach. I kind of put all of the the components of what um, what I was doing before going through this, uh, you know, personal tragedy, um, and really solidified it into a complete program for folks. So, you know, the C stands for that regenerative stem cell therapy, cellular regeneration. Uh, we live at an amazing time to be able to use these therapies and, uh, we're just seeing phenomenal results in the clinic. Wow. Wow. I am very curious about all of the stem cell therapies that you're using is I don't do anything like that in my office. So it's very fascinating. I think we could probably do a whole podcast on just stem cell therapies and talking all about that in general. So we went through the whole fancy approach. This is going to be in your book and your book is coming out soon. We don't have an exact date yet, but folks can head on over to your website at nature cures with the s clinic.com correct correct and they can get your early memory loss ebook and that'll set them up for being on a newsletter right a newsletter list so that they can hear about when the book comes out correct yeah we'll announce it off of that list there yeah that's perfect that's perfect because yeah it seems to me that boy there's a lot of folks out there that can use this information I mean, taking care of the brain is a huge factor as we age just in general, but I'm guessing you've got a lot of little nuggets in there to help us keep our brains strong and work with Parkinson's in general. Yeah, totally. Nice, nice. So in terms of where your office is at right now, say if someone is in the Portland area, are you taking patients? What's happening in that department? Um, say that one more time. In terms of the Portland area, are you taking patients right now in your oh, office? Oh, yes. I, I actually see um, – so what I have is what I call Camp Nature Cures. So I have people flying in from around the globe um, for this brain regenerative program. So I call it Camp Nature Cures in that people will come out for intensive therapies um, – five to six days they're they're coming out um we're doing a, an assessment before they get here um we have hyperbaric chambers and iv therapy suite um so they'll come in uh get a procedure with the regenerative stem cells we'll do an intranasal uh procedure and iv with them uh do some acupuncture and then they'll come in and they'll get hyperbaric um oxygen so we put them into chambers and pump the body full of awesome oxygen uh, while they're breathing 95% pure oxygen and we'll do some acupuncture thereafter, send them out for lunch and then they come back to repeat that in the afternoon. That way they get this uh, really big um, push into their energetic uh, field, so to speak, and, and really help set sail towards Wellville is what I call it. So we, you know, we really do these intensive therapies for folks. So yes, we are. I've got an associate doc down here, Dr. Claire. Uh, we're growing. It's a growing need and um, we're really out to help as many people as we can. All right. That's awesome to hear. So everybody, nature cures with an S clinic.com. If you're wanting to find out more about Dr. Greg Eccles' fancy approach to Parkinson's, I think it's fascinating. I'd love to do another podcast just talking about the stem cell therapies because we quick pop through that if you're up for it. Totally. I think that that could be really interesting because probably right now a lot of people are like, okay, I get the herbs, I get the, you know, looking at diet and nutrition, but what about this stem cell business? So I think we should have folks stay tuned and we should chat about finding a time to uh, talk about stem cells. Awesome. 
Hey, Health Junkies, I hope you enjoyed my podcast interview with Dr. Greg Eckel. He has a lot of information. I can't wait to do our next podcast on stem cells because I know we are kind of touching on it. And so we're giving you a little teaser, but don't worry, we will get to that. He is quite a wealth of information. And as soon as his book comes out, we will definitely put a link up to that at my podcast notes at thehealthfixpodcast.com. Now, if you know anyone that's suffering from a neurodegenerative disorder such as Parkinson's, by all means, please share this podcast with them. And if they are in the Portland area, by all means, reach out to Dr. Greg Eckel and get some good information. He's a wealth of knowledge, as you can tell from this podcast. All right, folks, you've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, everybody, Dr. Janine Krauss here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help, and I really appreciate all of your reviews.